Topics, favorite Seinfeld moments. And Blake, I find it really hilarious that a show that is designed for Boz doesn't have Boz on it. He's busy. So let's, let's talk about this for just a second. Now, this show was originally to pop you, Blake. I got a hold of Tandy and Boz, and I said, guys, what do you think about a Seinfeld best moments top X? Tandy was all for it. Boz was all for it. I even prefaced all of it, Blake, by saying, Boz, do you, do you like Seinfeld? And he goes, I was raised on Seinfeld. And I was like, what do you think about me, you and Tandy? Doing a top X, uh, top X episode on Seinfeld moments. I'm in. So then I start a group chat with me, Tandy, and Boz. And I'm like, guys, what do you think about this Wednesday? And of course, this was six months ago. Tandy's got stuff going on. Boz has got stuff going on. We finally work a day that we can all do this. It was two weeks from when I sent them the text. That day, Tandy's ready to go. And Boz out of the blue goes, Y'all just go ahead. It's out of my depth anyway. So are we officially firing Boz from his own show? I don't think so. Uh, all he needs is a chance, Ronnie. Give him another chance. Tandy's got stuff going on. So I give Tandy a break because I love him. Yeah. But Jay, not not carrying his weight. Tim's the only one willing to carry his weight, and we won't give him anything to do. Oh, I know. I'd be on here more too, but y'all won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true at it's all. True, Blake. I ask all the time. Don't will. Don't worry, homeboy. You're gonna get all the work you want in October. So I know. All right. So originally, top X rules, Blake, are we go from our number ten moment to our number one moment. But we've all decided that these moments, not episodes, but moments from Seinfeld that we like the most, really don't have to be in an order. Okay. You want me to start right. us off? You want to start? Yeah, I'll start us off. My number 10 is Frogger Gets Destroyed. <laughs> That's a great one. I love yeah, that. It, it's, it's a great episode. You know, George, he comes to realize that he still has the record, the number one spot on this Frogger machine that him and Jerry played in high school. And of, of course, he becomes obsessed with it. And he, he wants to, he, he tells Jerry, he's got a great line. And he's like, I'm never going to be a father. This Frogger machine, <laughs> it's all I got. It's all I got. So the whole episode is him trying to get the Frogger from point A to point B to get it in his house so he can keep it forever. And, and it, it, you know, he, he comes so close. He gets it right to the edge of the curb. The holes. <laughs> before, a, the holes. Before, before a truck just smashes it to pieces and you get the, the, the Frogger uh, loss sound effects. It's <laughs> so good. That is a great episode. Tandy, what you got for number 10? It's come to my attention that you had sexual intercourse with the cleaning lady on the desk in your office. Was that George wrong? has that job for a week. <laughs> Was that wrong? I got I to gotta, uh, plead ignorance here. Also, I mean, when you're talking about Seinfeld Christmas episodes, that's a Christmas episode because it's taking place during Christmas. Oh, that's so, right, with a cashmere sweater. Yeah, the guy from uh, American <laughs> Werewolf in London yep. as, as the guy that he gets off the wagon or back on the wagon, whichever it's called. You think you're better than me, Jerry? My number 10, guys, finding out that Kramer gave Jerry a shitty phone for his birthday during the whole coming out episode where they played that joke on that girl pretending George and Jerry pretends to be gay. Oh, that's right. And then Kramer gives him the two-way phone, and he switches over and goes, I guess we fooled her. And George can hear him on the other line. So, so, uh, Kramer gives him a shitty phone, and it causes the, the girl to run the story about him and George being gay, and it ends up in the New York Times. It's, it's a really good one, and not that there's anything wrong with that. They keep saying that the entire – and it's also an episode – that would never be made today. I mean, they, they could never get away with that episode today. A bunch of episodes of Seinfeld, they never could get away with today. Oh, for sure. My number nine is Soup Nazi Rejects George. Now, obviously, I could have just said Soup Nazi in general, but I really loves it. I loves it. I really love it when he rejects George. George is in line. He places his order, and he looks in the bag, and he goes, there's no bread. Jerry says, forget about it. Let it go. And he goes, excuse me, I didn't get any bread. You want bread? Three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he 
says, the person in front of me got bread for free. No soup for you. And he takes the shit out of his hand. <laughs> and that's <laughs> it. I love it. Well, the other great thing about that episode is when Jerry breaks up with his girlfriend in line because she was hugging on him and he didn't want any part of it. Do that's I know something else, That's something else Jerry does. When George George looks at Jerry like, do you have my bag? And Jerry goes, get out of here. <laughs> also, Jerry won't let Banya cut in line. Oh, that's right. All right, Danny, The best, nine. Jerry. The best. All right, well, I'm going to go to uh, – this guy's going to be on my list a lot, but the funniest character of this whole show to me was Frank Costanza. They were all good, but he was great. But I, um, the episode where Elaine thinks that the the Korean nail ladies are talking about her, so she takes him in there and she realizes what he said, <laughs> and he just loses his shit on them. I've never seen people treated like this. <laughs> What did he say? He was a cook in the military, right? In the yeah. Korean War. Yeah, I can't. He, runs down, a, he, run, he once sat down with the Reverend Sung Moon Fry or whatever <laughs> that's it is. That's what it was. He Sung Young Moon. Shoes off. What's great about that is they run Elaine out of there. No, for sure. And Frank is still in there yelling at him. <laughs> they were just going <laughs> to let him go. And then that fat, that fat one in the back is the one he had the affair with when he was uh, selling uh, statues or whatever in Korea. Oh, that's right. Well, that same episode, who hurt Bette Midler, George or Jerry? George. That was George. <laughs> Ran her over. So to went to get her nail salon back, she sent them to the uh, the Bette Midler play when Bette wasn't in it. Yeah, the stand Bette in. Midler? No Bette Midler there. <laughs> um, that's funny that you bring that one up because my number nine is George running over Bette Midler. The whole <laughs> – this whole scene is fantastic because – for some reason, Bet Midler is out in the middle of the park playing softball against the comics from the comedy club, and she's playing catcher. And George, George is talking shit to her the entire time, and she's talking it back. And George gets that hit at the end, and literally the best shot possibly in Seinfeld history is George running as fast as he can around second base almost falling down he's running so fast before he rounds third and runs over bet midler it is amazing it's a great scene and ends up with the the cast of mad tv chasing him away and jerry and george are the only two on the comics team celebrating <laughs> that they won everybody else is just appalled you hear somebody oh my god best hurt <laughs> and she's folded up into the fence it's a great scene i love that episode blake so going to my number eight, wow, this is this, this is low on my list too. I got Kramer saying, I'm out, I'm out of the contest. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> so they're looking at the woman next door who's naked. And Kramer doesn't say anything. He just walks out and he comes back 30 seconds later and slams money down on the table. Because he just got done beating off. <laughs> <laughs> it like hits him. He stands up and he walks out. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's got to happen that. now. It's, oh, it's yeah. Gotta... They were right from the contest. They just exchanged money, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah, well, he came in and threw his money down. That's right. I can't believe he had 100 bucks. It's always fascinating. Maybe. He's going to get you too, Ronnie. Uh, number eight is when uh, Jerry and George were in the studio head's apartment. And he was puking. <laughs> and uh, Denise Richards, his daughter, walks in. And Jerry nudges George. And George can't take his eyes off her tits. And the guy walks up and says, get a good enough look, Costanza. She's, get a good look, Costanza. <laughs> but, I mean, again, that's just a moment that when he said that line and that thing, Jerry had already moved on and didn't realize George is still looking. That was hilarious. What'd you nudge me for? You don't stare at cleavage. You take a peek. It's like the sun. Too My good. next one's going to be another George one. George uh, noticing the fire at the kid's <laughs> birthday party <laughs> and running over the old lady and the clown and multiple kids to get out of there. He gets out of there so fast that he's down there with oxygen in the in the fire truck or the ambulance when the rest of them get out of the building and the clown tries to beat his ass. Like the police have to hold the clown back. 
and he has to explain to him that as the uh, leader, he's got to be the first one out the door. John Favreau, which, right? It was John Favreau, which leads to a great uh, discussion with him and uh, Jerry at the uh, at, at the diner where he goes, so women and children, that's just an outdated thing for you, right? <laughs> he goes, she should be thanking me. And he goes, well, maybe when she gets released from the burn center, she'll, she'll have different thoughts. All right, my number seven is Elaine dancing. <laughs> oh, God. George was there, right? Yeah, he's jacket. the one that's yeah. old. George, George, George is at the party, uh, mooching, eating food, embarrassing <laughs> Elaine. And, you know, the name of the episode, I think, is The Little Kicks or yes, whatever. Sir. And uh, George notices it, and it makes him sick. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out Jerry's known about it for years. And, uh, you know, of course, every episode, there's this, there's two or three other plots going on that are fantastic. And this one, Jerry's illegally filming in the theater. And uh, Elaine records over a movie, records herself dancing, and it makes you cry, cry again. So well, the, uh, it's, it's so good. So the another funny thing about that one, and I've got something from that one on here later. George picks up the hot girl from Elaine's office. She then realizes he's harmless and doesn't like him. He picks her up in his dad's car, and he's like, "I'm bootlegging movies, baby. I can do. Something. It's time for this." He's got like the Letterman's jacket on, don't he? The Yankees Letterman's jacket, and his dad's like car seat that old people used to have, where the the wood rolls on your back. That's your orthopedic pillow. Yes. <laughs> What's great about that is she didn't want to take George because she thought he'd embarrass her. Oh, for sure. She literally did nothing wrong. She embarrassed herself. Uh, Elaine's in Elaine's Elaine's in the office, and behind her, you see two workers doing this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number seven, Kramer on the beach in the Hamptons. It's great. You got the Beach Boys. Uh, wouldn't it be nice playing behind him as he's walking around? You see him climb up into a life guy, a guard tower, and the next thing you know, he's like got all these women around. He's showing them how to swim cop walks up and tells him to get his ass down <laughs> and then he's walking around with the metal detector and he comes up on the fat guy's head you see him do the kramer thing and he leads him over to a rope and he's pulling on the rope and that's where he finds the lobsters and he brings them back to the house in the hamptons he's like fresh lobster for everybody and the <laughs> guy turns him in for stealing i can rewind and watch that beach scene over and over and over again i loved it whenever they put kramer out on an island by himself, and you got to see him interact with people with the other three idiots not around. It's also the one where George uh, brings so, the girl. That's great. <laughs> he brings the girl, and she's walking around topless while he's not there, and then it shrinks. Anyway, y'all may have that one. So I'm well, I've got shrinkage later, but what I don't have, that's even funnier than shrinkage to me is whenever George gets back from the tomato farm or wherever the hell he went, and Kramer's like, we saw Jay Tom topless. <laughs> She's got a great body, buddy. Congratulations. He's like, man, tomatoes, Hampton, Lobs lobster, saw lobster. Jane, saw Jane topless. Saw Jane topless. <laughs> She's got a great body, buddy. He My also says when she's walking around topless, uh, maybe she's trying to create a buzz. <laughs> Maybe she's trying to create a buzz. My number six is the line spoken by an unknown. George drives all the way to Ohio to get back at a guy. And this guy stands up and says, his wife's in a coma. His wife is in a coma. I love that. I love the jerk store. Oh, the jerk I, store. The yeah. jerk store. Yeah. So, so oh, he says, yeah? I had sex with your wife. <laughs> and the boss stands up and goes, his wife's in a coma. And it's just perfect because, like I said in the in the last one I did, a subplot is is them watching a movie and, and planning out their will if they were to fall into a coma. You know, I mean, it's just so good. And then George, you think it would end there, but it shows him in the end credit scene driving. Yeah, well, the life support machine called. <laughs> and you see him turning fun. around. <laughs> And what's great is they always go to Kramer's line. Like Jerry's trying to give him a, a joke to come back with. And Kramer goes, why don't you just say you slept with his wife? That gets him every time. Well, my number seven quickly was when Susan died, George's reaction. And that was later used in the final episode by that doctor. But uh, number six is uh, 
whenever. Wait, did we not get your number seven? No, that was it. It's, you know, not a lot to tell. That's just great. And then the whole relationship with George and Susan's parents after that, where the, the, the benefit they had, the, I can't think of it. Number six, though, which is a real good one, was when they all went to the party in uh, upstate, George ends up going to have sex with the lady in his office. And after Kramer comes and gets him, that guy that helped own the house shows up at Jerry's apartment. <laughs> gets, and, a uh, gets a hooker. Gets a hooker. Jerry has to pay for it. I'm not leaving without my money. I'm not going to go anywhere until I get the rest of my money. That's uh, one of those in the season that you have to wonder. You know, we love that episode now, but that first season and a half, some of those are rough. It was rough, but that episode was great. That was one of the first wow, because that is a thing that happens. There are people that are so unaware of themselves that would show up at your house and think, you know, Jerry wants to get drunk and get hookers. <laughs> hey, you said if I was ever in town. <laughs> well, I'm in town. <laughs> Jerry didn't even remember who he was. Oh, that's great. And Jerry leaves him in his apartment. He says, I got to go. Yeah, he's got to go to a club or Oh, no. Where was he going? He was going he, to do he, something. He had a gig. Yeah, that's right. Well, if he had a gig, why didn't he take him with him? I don't think he had a gig. He had something else he had to do. He had to grab yeah. cash Nana's checks. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> My next one is Ret <laughs> Kramer. Oh. <laughs> Mel, what are they? <laughs> My number six, the episode where Jimmy, that's where they start talking in the third person. George talks about in the third person from that episode on. Kramer goes to the dentist and his face is all numb and he's talking all weird, lazy tongued, and he slobbers all over the floor. And Jimmy slips and hurts his back and goes into traction. And Jimmy down! Oh! Jimmy down! When Jimmy sees him again, he punches him in the face, but while he's while Kramer's walking around all numb, he runs into the head of the foundation for Bean special, fry. yeah, for special people, and they're riding a cab together. Kramer's like, "What's there? Yeah, what's that? All right, yes. What's <laughs> and he was wearing those shoes that you jump with. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The exercise that conversation in the cab is great because he goes, "Oh, you're real independent." Oh Kramer yeah. Goes, Live You're not doing so bad yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing too bad yourself. <laughs> and you can't watch that scene with Mel Torme at the end of the episode where he's singing the, I don't know how uh, Michael Richards was able to keep it together and not just bust out because he's like, <laughs> time he's singing to him. But that whole episode is great. I mean, it's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite episodes. is 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 just really good. It's not for everybody, especially not today. But I love that episode. It's good. It's it, it's it. You know, whatever. Number five for me is Jerry buying a car from Putty. Uh, <laughs> this right. episode is more of a display of George, but just just everything about this is uh, it's it's so good. George is starving to death. He goes to the candy lineup. <laughs> he never gets to eat. They were all Twix. Jerry, uh, he's ripping me off. Everybody's ripping me off. He tries to get Elaine and Putty back together. Uh, you charge me for keys. How are you going to start it? <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's fantastic from start to finish. Yeah, we got you that uh, yellow sob. Yellow? He's like, yeah. It. Putty, very underrated character that hardly anybody talks about when they talk about great characters from Seinfeld. And and George really is the star of this episode to me, but just because it shows how, psych, how psychotic he is. And, uh, yeah, Jerry buying the car from Putty. I can't remember. The dealership is the name of it, I think. Uh, that's when Kramer and the other car salesman, didn't they go on a ride on empty? That, that's yeah. right. That's right. Is this just a way for you to drive your friend's car and not pay him for gas? Well, that's one way to look at it. Number five, I had written down the shrinkage, but I mean, that's there. Um, another one I marked through, but I think it's worth mentioning is whenever George's parents just thought he had died. The first <laughs> question was, why did you trade Jay Buna? <laughs> Stanza. What the hell did you trade Jay Buna for? <laughs> How did he die? He wanted to go straight into the Yankees. 
Well, he said he's been a real dynamo in the office here lately. First one there, last one to leave. And his mom goes, are you sure you're talking about our George? Jerry's Frank is Stanza Steinbrenner's here. George is dead. Call the <laughs> He left it on an answer machine. It didn't even it, it didn't even affect Jerry. He's just like, who is this? My number five is the close talker, Judge Reinhold. <laughs> With Jerry parents. And how how Jerry was not able just to bust out laughing when you know he's a bit of a close talker and he goes to air, he goes to his mom, he goes to his dad. He goes to Elaine, and then he's in Jerry's face. And that close-up they do of Jerry and Judge uh, Judge Ryan, he is right here. I'm Swan. You sure? Can examine the art? He's like, what about you, Jerry? And he goes, no, I'm swamped. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> he is right here. And that is, I mean, it's great. I love it. And I think people don't talk about Judge Reinhold enough. His little cameo on that show he was amazing he was because amazing. he was psychotic too. Elaine dated nothing but psychos. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And homeless guys. <laughs> he he was just, he was in love. He was in love with Jerry's parents. He was screaming when they was getting on the plane. <laughs> Make sure they got water. <laughs> we could have done so much more. <laughs> Bought me a Coke. My number four is Jerry acting like Kramer in the Kenny Rogers episode. That's great. Kenny Rogers restaurant comes into town and the red light is shining right into Kramer's <laughs> apartment. He somehow convinces Jerry, which is pretty unrealistic if you think about it, to, to swap rooms with him. Well, he well, had Jerry, he had Jerry by the balls because Jerry got that guy fired because That's he was like, right. hey, what's the off the meeting? I only know you through Moopy or whatever his name was. <laughs> Moochie. Moochie. <laughs> that guy was like, ah, oh, what the hell? They went and ate. And he goes, isn't yeah. that a big meeting? He goes, yeah. yeah. He's working at Popeye's. I mean, Rogers, I mean. Jerry's laying in that bed and stuff is moving around in that apartment. <laughs> and Kramer doesn't have pets or anything. And uh he 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 slide he does the Kramer slide and and, and Kr what's also funny is Kramer's acting like Jerry. That's Kramer's right. at the diner giving Elaine advice, drinking coffee, and goes, That's a shame. Uh, it's, just, it's just it was just a fun episode. Jerry talked to Bob Sacramento all night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that Kramer's friend? Oh, yeah, but he called at midnight. We got it talking. <laughs> it's actually very, very negligible. But the difference is negligible. The, the best scene is at the very end when he finds Kramer is hooked on the chicken. He goes, I'm moving back in here. And, and Kramer has no problem going back to the going back to his apartment because he's hooked on the chicken. And when the, the place closes down, he's yeah. like got the sign, the sheet hanging out of his bed, just going, Kenny. Kenny. <laughs> Kenny. Kenny. Uh, another another underrated part is before they made the switch when Kramer goes to open Jerry's door to go back to his apartment. He opens the door and the red light hits him and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> he puts the tomato juice on the cereal. My yeah. rods and cones are all messed up. Number four for me, the whole episode's hilarious. It's called Pool Boy. Um, <laughs> but this Ramon befriends Jerry and shows up at his house, and he's like, hey, you crazy guy. But the funniest part of the whole thing is when Jerry's trying to leave the health club, and the two little Mexican guys are like, where are you going? And he's like, I'm going out with Ramon. I, I got to go to see Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Jerry's done with it, when everybody thinks they're his friends. And then, of course, he and Kramer wouldn't give him mouth to mouth, and he almost died. He got kicked out of the health club. Are you going with Ramon? <laughs> My next one is... George eating out of the trash. Oh, yeah. That uh, because, eclair. Yeah, George tries to act all sophisticated. There is no reason. There is food all over the counters. There was extra pastries in that kitchen. But he opens up the trash and sees an eclair <laughs> with a bite out of it. And he reaches down into the trash to eat it about the time her mom walks in to see him eating out of the trash. There is, if you think about it, what the hell is wrong with him? There's no reason for him to be eating yeah, out of the trash. When you think about it, he's on an island all alone, too. It's just him in there. Like, it's him and her entire family. There's no coming back from this. You just got no. caught eating out of the trash. It's, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. He has to ride home alone thinking of that. All right, top three, Blake. 
Uh, the next one on my list, Ronnie, is George does the opposite. My name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. I think everybody who's seen this episode has had that thought. Like, what if I, what if I just did, did the opposite for a week? What would happen? Well, this episode gives it to us. It turns out George's life would be damn near perfect if he would just do the opposite of every instinct he ever had. I mean, he's he's rude to the girl. This hot girl who agrees to go on a date with him. He's rude to, I think, her uncle who gets him a job with the Yankees. Uh, the uh, club. Right, right. He, he does the opposite with his parents. I love you both very, very much. <laughs> and Jerry goes, opposite. It's just, uh, it's such a fun episode. And it, what's great is the dynamic with Elaine because everything going great for George is everything's going bad for Elaine. And then, you know, you find out Jerry is even Stevens. I had another Frank Costanza, but that would give me two out of my last three. A character we haven't talked about is Uncle Leo. Um, And uh, the episode where Jerry's doing the benefit for PBS and baseball and George thinks the guy's flipping he and uh, Danny Tartable off, but it turns out he had a broken finger. Jerry cashes his Nana's check, gets her overdrawn at the bank at at Kramer's deal. So Nana calls in to to Kramer to get to Jerry and he gets her to donate more money. And Uncle Leo goes on the TV and says, she's on a very fixed income. Stop the show. She's on a very fixed income. Stop the show. Uh, Nana going to the bank and meeting that guy with scars all over his face in the alleyway. It burns, lady. It's gone. Oh, dear. I ended up with one too many, and I don't know which one to choose. So there's a I've bunch of an honorable here. mention or two at the end. Yeah, I'll do an honorable mention. This next one, uh, the next couple is, is Kramer heavy. I'm going to go with Poppy peeing on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry gets a new couch, gives his old couch to Elaine. And that's the episode where they're talking about abortion. Yeah. And Jerry being an ass says, well, what if, what if Poppy feels that way about abortion? And he starts a whole situation in Poppy's restaurant. Well, and Poppy gets pissed Poppy. at him because he Poppy's pissed at him because he cooked this special duck from Newfoundland. And he well, comes over to get his money. Eat the duck, if you'll remember, Poppy pissed and didn't wash his hands, and Jerry saw it. No, that that's another episode. It is the first time we ever saw Poppy was the episode where uh, Jerry's dating a girl that refuses to eat the apple pie, and then they go on a date to her dad's restaurant, and Poppy tells him he's going to cook the pizza special for them, and then he sees him kneading the dough. This one is Poppy uh, agrees to go in with Kramer on his make your own pizza restaurant yes, idea. That's right, and. Jerry asked the question this episode, isn't his kitchen filthy? And uh, Kramer goes, it was just rated the cleanest in New York City. So when they get in there, Jerry starts a bunch of shit by breaking up abortion. And Poppy shares the story about his mama. And it like half the people get up and leave. So he's pissed at him because they didn't eat the duck. So he comes over to the house and he gets his money. But while he's sitting there on the, he sits down on the couch while Jerry goes to get the money. And he's like, <laughs> Ah, <sighs> Kramer goes, you tired, Poppy? No. <laughs> and when he gets up, there's a gigantic piss puddle on Jerry's couch, and Jerry's just floored while he leaves. Yeah. They, they what? <laughs> and when he screamed, Poppy pissed on my sofa. <laughs> Poppy peed on my sofa! <laughs> the water from the water bottle hits Kramer in the face, <laughs> and it's dripping off Jerry's face. I don't know how they kept a straight face. I don't know face. how they didn't break during that. And Kramer's like, it's no big deal. Oh, you're right. Just a normal human function that should be in the toilet is on my couch. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> he gave it to George. George flipped the cushion over. My number two is George stops having sex and becomes brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's he's uh he's hitting he's showing Jeter no he's showing Jeter how to hit homers <laughs> Yankee State guys Jeter and Bernie Williams yeah he, he's showing them what to do we won the World Series yeah in five games he fills in for Jerry at a at, at the middle school I, I believe to do a couple of science experiments and then he blows it because he says Jerry if you look at the odds and 
I had to have sex with this Portuguese waitress. The chances of me doing that were mathematically, I had to do it, Jerry. <laughs> what happened was Jerry kept getting bumped at the high school for career day, and then they give Jerry an hour, and he don't know what he's going to do with the hour, so George takes 30 minutes off his hands, and at the end, George screws him. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't go in there. That's a good, oh, to have you, good to have you back. <laughs> Number two for me is the episode Blake talked about earlier, but at the very end, whenever George got busted for bootleg in the movies and Elaine went to get the girl and Elaine and uh, Frank Estanza get into it and he said, you want a piece of me? <laughs> you saying you want a piece of me? Uh, that that I, episode ends where they're about to punch him. About to freeze punch frame. Him. Uh, honorable mention for Frank Costanza was also when he and Estelle wanted to move to Florida. He kept saying, you're trying to tell me there's not one condo at the Boca Vista. <laughs> this is Frank Costanza. <laughs> We're coming to Del Boca Vista. Lock, stock, and barrel. We're going to be at the shuffleboard court. <laughs> We're gonna be... My number two is... God, I got two that I'm deciding. All right, I'm going with uh, the sniffer, the sniffing accountant. When Kramer kicks in the bathroom door while the dude's shitting... Hey, what kind of nut are you? So you can take a picture of him. The whole exactly. scene leading up to that is great with Jerry and Newman and Kramer all in the car. And Kramer's like, maybe we should all become private investigators. And he goes in, and as soon as he sits down, he's got that freaking sweater on. He's smoking and drinking a beer at the same time. <laughs> the guy walks by and he throws up the, the side of the table to hit him in the head. <laughs> the scene where he downs the whole beer while still puffing on the cigarette. And I don't know how Michael Richards was able to do the whole reverse cigarette in the mouth thing. Oh, because for sure. The fireside. Him and Newman had a great idea that he would kick the door in while he's in the stall to try to catch him. Take a Polaroid. <laughs> Take a Polaroid while he's supposedly doing coke in the stall. But instead, he took a picture of him taking his shit. <laughs> and at the end of it, it's like... We got to get that letter back. It's got all those exclamation points. And Kramer goes, not to mention the picture of him on the toilet. And Jerry has to come back after 30 seconds and go, the picture of what? <laughs> <laughs> and what's great at the end of it, he really was on drugs. Oh, for sure. Didn't they mail him the picture? No, uh, uh, Newman dropped it. Because remember, Newman walked up to oh. that fat one and rubbed <laughs> on her material. And she started screaming for Johnny. And Johnny chases Newman off with the letter. He never got the letter mailed, so they lost all their money. That's great. My number one, and it's it's my favorite episode in the in the entire series, is Kramer thinks he's Merv Griffin. <laughs> uh, Kramer digs in the trash and finds the set for the Merv Griffin show. It, it, it completely disgusts Jerry. Where are the cameras? <laughs> <laughs> and that's so. At first, he has. Jerry and Elaine sit in and he's just, he's talking and they're looking at him like, what the hell are you doing? Cause he's talking to him like he's the host and he's looking at nothing over here. <laughs> We're back. And he's eating crackers and drinking Coke. He's fake laughing. And uh, later on, you know, after Jerry does his drugs, his girlfriend to play with her toys, he has, you know, they do the Jerry Springer approach and they bring him on and they end up having an animal expert on. <laughs> In the middle of in the middle of the interview, the animal expert just goes, "Where are the cameras? <laughs> Where are the cameras?" And it's just brilliant. It's brilliant because he's got to be one who's like, "What the hell am I doing in here? I got a hawk on my hands." And he's like, "No, you idiot! You can't have that squirrel in here. It's just a huge waste of time." That's the great. My number one, my favorite episode from the whole show. Elaine has a friend from Kenya that doesn't speak good English come to compete in a race. <laughs> Kramer gets a hot tub and George is entertaining the, the managers from the Astros. They teach George how to cuss. He teaches the Kenyan how to cuss. He goes back and Elaine has told Jerry that her neighbor had a baby out of wedlock. So he goes back thinking he's being sweet. He says, Look at mommy's little bastard. Look at the cute little bastard. <laughs> you are mommy's little bastard, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and then when the super comes in there to fuck with me, he says, what's wrong with you, you son of a bitch? <laughs> 
But the funniest line of the whole show to me was when he just learned how to cuss. Kramer fell asleep in the hot tub. Yes, he's, blue, yes. he's ice cold. And he says, feel these hands. He said, this son of a bitch is ice cold. <laughs> this son of a bitch is ice cold. <laughs> this is my, I don't know if it's my favorite episode, but it's the best moment. This is the first thing that stuck out when I, when I thought about this, this topic. Jerry wins the race. He got the head start. And this, it's another Christmas episode if you pay attention because Kramer gets a job at a department store with Mickey and <laughs> Elaine's dating a communist and he gives Kramer some uh, communist uh, uh, material to read and Kramer's telling all the little kids. Hey, this guy's a commie! And the episode centers around Jerry's girlfriend works for Duncan Meyer who Jerry beat in a race when they were like in seventh or eighth grade. And he got a head start, and nobody knew it. And for years, they talked about the myth of his speed, and they tried to get him to join the track team, and he would always tell them the same thing, I choose not to run. <laughs> and Duncan wants him to race again, and he's going to fire his girlfriend, and Jerry agrees to race. And Kramer's all pissed off because he got fired. And he's like, George, we got to go to the airport. I'll be in the car. Kramer don't even want to watch the race. Like Duncan invited all these people from high school and they're in this alleyway. They even bring the PE coach back and Kramer sits down in his piece of shit car and he goes to crank it and it backfires. And when it backfires, Jerry takes off and he wins by like 10 yards. And the whole, the whole race scene is the Superman theme mm -hmm. because Jerry's infatuation with Superman and like everybody celebrating in slow motion. You can see Duncan shoving, the uh, old Mr. Belvacqua, whatever his name was. <laughs> so he got a head start and he knocks Elaine out of the way to go hug Lois. And she's like, will you come to Hawaii with me, Lois? I mean, Jerry, and he goes, maybe Lois, maybe. And he winks at the camera for the freeze frame. That is the pinnacle of, of Seinfeld for me, because that was so much going on in that episode. And it all tied back in at the end. Yeah, Not that you're it's me. You're not right. The, the legend lives on too. It was great. Not, yeah. Not to mention leaving out one of the funniest parts where George is going to pretend that he hasn't seen Jerry in forever. Yeah. And he comes in there and he goes, he goes, what do you do? He goes, I'm a stand up comedian. What do you do? A lot of that. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever seen that <laughs> stuff? And he goes, yeah, 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 he goes, yeah, yeah. A lot of comics seem to be doing that. You really went bald, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and George gets mad. And he's like, well, I'll see y'all later. <laughs> the two of them together it was uh, unbeatable. <coughs> so What's I your have, other one that was? Oh, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I have two honorable mentions. That's actually from the same episode. We, I don't think we've talked about. Uh, uh, gosh, what's her name? What's 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 George's wife's name? Susan. Uh, Susan. We ain't talked about Susan's parents yet. And uh, there's one episode where Kramer gets a horse named Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Beefarino, no, I'm Beefarino. Feeds it Beefarino, and he try, they try to do something nice for for Susan's parents, and the, the horse just keeps shitting and farting, <laughs> and it ruins their fancy cab ride. But in the same episode, George gets caught by the parents, and we talk about being on an island and having to face that embarrassment. He gets caught with a fishing pole trying to get the raw bread back up in there that his parents stole that his parents stole <laughs> and meanwhile on the ground jerry is stealing the shit from an old woman <laughs> give it your old bag and he's uh, so, the best yeah. part of that episode may have been when kramer was toting all the stuff in he's got all those drinks because he's been like to the costco or whatever and he does a header in the hall right there in front of his door and the shit goes everywhere well, I, I think just... I bought too much, buddy. <laughs> you know, I think I spent too much at that store. <laughs> Any uh, other honorable mentions, Blake, or is that it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was those three from that one episode. All right, Tandy. After Lloyd Braun's uh, nervous breakdown, when George was trying to convince the other girl from their high school that Lloyd Braun had screwed up the car. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, David Putty being a face painter. The Devils! But there's so many. I mean, God knows what a what a great show. Yeah, David Putty on the plane, vegetable lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want something to read? No. She breaks someone because he's looking straight ahead. <laughs>
Uh, my, I had one honorable mention on the list here. Kramer having to take a shit in the middle of the audition for Jerry. Yeah. He sneaks in and he's like, I saw Mickey Mantle in Dinky Donuts. And he like grabs his stomach and he gets up and like he hits himself with the door and he runs down the hallway and they won't let him shit there. He runs across the road and they say customers only. It shows him running through the park holding his stomach. And then next time we see him, he says he got mugged. And he can't shit. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of it, they're doing, uh, I think, the pilot episode. And it cuts back to Kramer going to the CVS or whatever and getting the enema kit and looking oh, at yeah. the hose. <laughs> <laughs> then shutting the door. Oh, it's too good. I don't know. And what's great about this show is we just did eat, we each did a top 10. And I don't think we overlapped at all pretty much and, and i keep thinking of things that we missed i yeah. mean it's just that good seinfeld is definitely my favorite show and i think i blake we really should do like a mount rushmore of sitcoms we should do an episode tandy we're gonna bring you back we'll do an episode of mount a mount rushmore of sitcoms like the four greatest sitcoms ever okay. and, we'll, and we'll do that pretty quick but that's it list it and well, blah, blah, blah. List in the comments, guys. What are your favorite moments from Seinfeld, favorite episodes, all that stuff? Hit the like button, subscribe. Blake, Tandy, anything else? Giddy up. Wiping just my ass because, I mean, I can't reach everything on my back and I can't reach everything below me. So, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a lie if you believe it. <laughs>